Hey, welcome everyone to another video. Uh, if you're new here, consider subscribing and hitting the little bell so you're alerted every time I come out with a, with a new video. So you wanna make a demo reel. Here are 10 things to keep in mind while you are working on your demo reel. Now you might be thinking, what's Carlos know about making demo reels? Well, besides me releasing my own demo reel like two weeks ago, I used to be a career services advisor at an animation school just outside Chicago. And part of my job was to take a look at everyone's demo reel, to pick out the good parts and the parts that needed a little bit of work to make them a little bit more successful while looking for a job. And with that being said, let's get into it. While we're going through all of these 10 things, you need to keep in mind who your audience is. Your audience is a producer, a director, recruiter, showrunners, anything like that. And generally speaking, all of those job titles that I just listed out, all of those people are incredibly busy. They don't have a lot of time to dedicate to just your demo reel. That's why Number one is very important. Generally speaking, I tell people they should keep their demo between one to two minutes long. You don't really need that much time to prove that you can do this job. As a matter of fact, if you go any longer, you're going to feel the pressure to add more stuff to it and it might not be your best work. So you need to keep the demo reel length itself, nice and concise. And again, you have to remember the people that are gonna be watching this are really busy. They just want the goods. They don't want a lot of fluff. They just wanna see that you can do the job that they're looking to fill. Which then brings us to number two. the actual content that you're putting in. Now you're gonna hear people say, pack the front of your demo reel full of all your best stuff. And then kind of like towards the middle, you can put the stuff that's not quite so strong. And then the end, you wanna put some of the good stuff again so you leave a good taste in, in, the, in the person's mouth who's actually watching this demo reel. My views are this, put your best stuff up front your best stuff towards the back and the best stuff towards the middle. You want the one to two minutes of your demo reel to be nothing but fire because you are going up against about 200 other people who are also submitting demo reels. And you have to assume that those people are just putting the best work out. So you yourself have to have that same mentality. Put out the best work that you can possibly create that's what's going to make you stand out. And that leads us to number three. What kind of work should you put in your demo reel? Now this one's somewhat easy. Load the demo reel with the things that you are passionate about creating, the things that you want to do on a full-time basis. Don't load the demo reel full of things that you don't really want to do because inevitably what's going to happen is you're going to get hired to do a job and then day in and day out, you're going to have to work on the stuff that just drives you nuts. Item number four. Use your work. And by your work, I mean your characters. Let's say you're up for a job at Disney. And so you get motivated and you take Mickey Mouse and you put him in a scene that you want Mickey Mouse to be in. The danger with that is if Mickey Mouse isn't on model and by on model, I mean, there's these sheets that are called model sheets or style sheets. And these sheets answer questions like how many heads tall is Mickey Mouse? Or what does Donald Duck's bill look like when he's turned from one side or the other? Going back to the dangers of you including well-known characters in your demo reel, if your characters aren't dead on, you're just gonna look like someone who kinda tried to draw a well-known character. Instead, consider using your own characters 
because those are the ones that came out of your own head. No one's gonna be able to tell you what your character looks like in whatever situation you're putting them in. Those are your rules. And people might not be as familiar with your character as they are with Mickey Mouse, and so they're not gonna be as picky because their eyes aren't used to seeing your character as much as they are Mickey Mouse. And number five. Use your own work, do not plagiarize. I know that this one should be obvious, but I've heard stories of people packing their demo reel full of other people's stuff. It's going to end up catching up to them because if you have a demo reel full of other people's stuff and you're showing this demo reel to that busy group of people that we continue to talk about, they're expecting you to be able to do that work. So if you haven't done that work, you're not gonna be able to deliver and they're expecting you to deliver exactly what you showed that you can do. Now there is a time where you can use someone else's work, but that's only if you were in a team environment and you got permission from everyone else that was on the team to use that footage for your demo reel. And even then, you wanna be absolutely crystal clear with your responsibilities with that clip. Let's move on to number six. I've talked to a lot of recruiters and directors and we've had conversations about their process as to looking through demo reels. Generally speaking, the process goes a little like this. They'll start playing your demo reel, but with the music off, because they might be on a phone call, they might be checking emails, they might be doing something, they might have someone in their office and they just don't want this racket to be playing while they're going on about their day. So they'll just mute it. You want to pick good music that you're connected to, but for the most part, that music is only going to be for people who's looking at your demo reel on YouTube. Keep in mind, you're going for an animation job. You're not necessarily going for a music producer job. Number seven, which is very much like number six, Don't spend a lot of time on a website. Find a nice website with templates that you can fill with your animation and your art. There's artstation.com, there's WordPress, there's uh, Squarespace. Get something that is going to help you accomplish a website as fast as possible. The time that you could be spending working on a website, all of that time could go towards your animations. And that's your ultimate goal, your animation. You're trying to get an animation job. You're not trying to get a job developing websites or music for that matter. Okay, so for number eight, we have to go back to the original group that we were talking about. The directors, the recruiters, the producers, the people that are actually looking at your demo reel. You have to assume that these guys are incredibly busy, so you need to do your job at making them be able to find you as easy as possible. So put your contact information on your demo reel. That way, they don't have to fish any information out. Everything is right in front of them. If they enjoy the demo reel, they have your email, they have your website address, they have your phone number, all that good stuff available. They don't have to do anything. Everything is right in front of them. Which leads me to number nine. We have a lot of creeps out there. We do. So you don't necessarily want to have your phone number and email address out there for the public to see. So my suggestion is have two versions of the demo reel. One has all of your personal information on it. So it would have your name, your URL, your email, your phone number. Again, you're trying to make it as easy as possible for recruiters to find you and contact you. So for the second demo reel, you want your name and your URL. 
just in case someone happens to see your demo reel, they'll still be able to get a hold of you. But you don't want your personal information. You don't want your cell phone and your email address on that video. So what you do with both of those videos is you put them on, I use YouTube, so I put both of them on YouTube. I have my public one set to public and I have my work one set to unlisted. That way I have a video with a link to all of my personal information and my demo reel and I send that link to all the recruiters and I have the public one just sitting there waiting for the public to see. And finally number 10. Have fun. This is a recruiter's first opportunity to take a look at you, your work, and even some of your personality that's coming through in the demo reel. So if you're stressed out about having a demo reel or even having enough content for a demo reel, it's going to come through and it might influence their decision. So just get your best work, have fun making it, have fun putting it together, and have fun sending it out there. That way, People have a good understanding of who you are and make them want to work with you. And remember, being an animator is awesome. Sure, it takes a lot of time, but the work is so rewarding. And it's a lot of fun to be able to tell your friends, hey, look, look what I did. So there are 10 things that you can keep in mind while working on your demo reel. First, keep it short. Second, use only your best stuff. Third, Make sure that you are including only the work that you want to be doing full time. Fourth, use your characters. Fifth, make sure that it's your work that you're showing off. Sixth, don't waste too much time on music. Similar to seven, don't waste a lot of time on a website. Eight, make sure that your contact information is easily accessible. Nine, make two different videos, one for recruiters, one for the public, and 10, have fun. So what do you guys think about my 10 things to keep in mind? Did I miss anything? Leave a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have an animator in your life that's looking to create a demo reel, send this on over to them. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. See ya.